the Lake District to feast for the eyes with 16 sparkling lakes, England's highest mountains, heather covered moorland, sheltered valleys and salty seascapes. But there's more to see than just scenery. The area has a growing reputation for fine food and drink. I'm Peter Sidwell and I'm a chef and let's face it, when you live somewhere as beautiful as this, you don't want to spend all your time in the kitchen. Coming up, how to have great food fast. There's my Cumberland meatballs with pasta, a posh fish finger sandwich and my quick ice cream. Plus, everything you ever wanted to know about Cumberland sausage and a visit to the Coniston Water Festival. Hold on tight, it's time to serve up a fast and tasty helping of the lakes on a plate. Nestling between the western edge of the Lakeland Fells and the Irish Sea is the sleepy village of Wibberthwaite. This is home to Richard Woodall. They've been around for 178 years and they're renowned for their traditionally cured hams, bacon and sausages. and it's sausages with a bit of a reputation that's brought me this way, a world famous Cumberland sausage. Ah, Colin, I found you. I feel like I'm in the middle of nowhere. Well, it is a long way from anywhere, I have to It is, it is, but I'm here now. Tell me, your business has been running, a family business been running for nearly 200 years now. What changes do you think have happened over all that time? Not actually that many. A lot of the products that we make, certainly the core products, yeah. are still made using exactly the same recipes and the same techniques as have always been used. So I'm here to find out about the sausages and the curing that you do. Can we go and have a look at what you do? Yeah, I'm of course doing? you can. Yeah, let's go and have a look. So we're going to make Cumberland sausage then? We are, yeah. If you, uh, do you want to have a go and get your hands dirty? I definitely do. I'm really excited about this. I've never made proper sausages Have before you? and, and yours are so sort of iconic with the area. I'm even more excited. Great. Well, we've got some uh, some meat here which is ready to go into the filler. Okay. So, shall we put this And this, this is in just minced pork. This is minced pork to which the seasonings have been added. Right. Yeah. And is that a bit of a secret? That's a secret. Secret recipe. recipe. Yeah. Shall we load it up? Yeah. Let me just take some out of here. So all we have to do in order to get meat out right. is to is to press that pedal with a with a knee. There must be a real knack to this, is there? Well, yeah, it's something. It, it, it doesn't take too long to get the hang of. But right. uh, if we start off reasonably slowly, really, yeah. um, pinch the end of the casing there yeah. and press the pedal, and out it comes. And then feed it out. Yep, just like that. It looks really easy, but I'm sure it's not. Do you want to have a go? I do. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah. Okay. There you go. You're a natural. Well, that's not too bad for a first go. <laughs> that's really good. I quite like doing that. You're also quite famous for doing hams. That's what I first learnt about you when I moved to Cumbria. Can I have a look at those? Yeah, absolutely. Of course, we were the first. We were actually the first company in the UK to produce the the Cumbria air dried ham yeah. on a commercial scale. Mm. So yeah, we'll go and have a look at some. Definitely. Okay, Peter, so this is the dry curing room. Right. Uh, Never seen so much bacon. This is, where <laughs> we, this is where we produce all the traditional dry cured bacon yeah. and hams um, that you can see here. Wow. Um, the legs of pork for the hams, they'll stay in here for a total of four weeks. Bacon, do you have to turn them? Yeah, oh. we, we turn them each week. Is that a bed of salt? That's, there, that's a salt. bed of salt. That's a, it's actually a mixture of salt and brown sugar, essentially. Yeah. So um, that kind of like sucks out all the moisture, or a lot of the moisture. That's exactly what happens, yeah. yeah. I mean, basically traditional dry curing works by removing so much moisture from the yeah. meat that bacteria can't survive. Can we have a look at the hams that have yeah. moved from here into the drying room? Absolutely, yes. Let's go upstairs and have a look Excellent. at them hanging up. Lead the way. Okay, wow. Peter. Um, so this is the ham maturing room yeah. um, and um, 
as, as you saw the hams downstairs, yeah, they, yeah. they spent a month down there in the salt, and then we bring them into this room right. to, uh, to mature them. Some of these in here are quite a lot bit smaller, so they must lose quite a bit oh, of they weight. Do, they, do, the they do shrink quite considerably yeah. during the process. To give you a rough idea, if we start off at the outset with a leg of raw pork, which yeah. weighs 10 kilos, yeah. then we are going to be able to sell probably no more than three possibly three and a quarter. That yeah. would be the absolute maximum yield that we would expect to get out of that Gosh. leg of pork. But I mean, you don't need a lot, do you? No, a little goes a long way, yeah. That's, yeah. that's right, yeah. yeah. Ah, that's the Cumberland sausage I'm after. If I can get some of that, it'd be brilliant. Yep, certainly. Will that do you? That'll do just fine, thank you. I've got a cracking little recipe for this. I can't wait to get back to the kitchen. Good. Brilliant, thank you very much, cheers. If you're anything like me, your life's gonna be pretty hectic, 24 seven, non-stop. So this recipe is gonna be a great solution. When I'm cooking, I don't wanna compromise flavor, I wanna maximize it, and time shouldn't become an issue. This dish here is based around using this sauce here. If this is like my family staple this, I make this sauce every week. It's four tins of tomatoes, two onions, a bulb of garlic, a vegetable stock cube, and I just simmer that down until the onions are really tender, and then I blend it up, pop it in the fridge, and then you can just use the sauce for all kinds of different dishes, be it pizzas, pasta sauces, bases for soups, anything. So I've just got three or four ladlefuls of this and a little bit of water, and I'm just gonna let that simmer. And then I've got a pan of water here on the boil. So by the time we've made the pasta, the meatballs will be cooked in the sauce and ready. So 10 minutes this dish takes. So first of all, in with some salt. You've got to salt the water that you're gonna cook the pasta in because at the end you can really taste the difference. And then just some spaghetti. I'm gonna serve four people this dish. So I want about maybe half, two thirds of a pack. And then just into the water. The key is give it a little twist and then just drop it in and then that'll soften and that'll drop into the pan. So while that's cooking, we'll get the meatballs ready. So, the really quick and easy way to make some meatballs is get some good local sausages. Squeeze the sausage meat out of the skins. This is great because it's already seasoned up. So all we need to do is just add a few little flavors to this. Kind of from the middle and just pull out and you end up getting all the sausage meat out. It's a really quick, easy way to do this. That should be enough. And then we're just gonna give it some life, some flavor. So I wanna add a little bit of chili, a little bit of garlic, and then some fennel. Three classic combinations of flavors that are gonna work really well. So take the top off the chili, cut down the middle, and then just scrape the seeds out. If you don't want it too hot, you just want a little bit of flavor. But if you like it really hot, leave the seeds in. And then just chop those up as finely as you can. You can use dried chilies for these as well if you want. You know, if they're in the store cupboard, there's nothing wrong with using those. Pop those in. Crush the garlic. And then I'm going to put in two cloves of garlic in this one. Should be enough. And then just get your back of your knife and just smash the garlic clove. Unwrap it. And then put it all together and then just run your knife through it really carefully. Chop it up nice and fine. So the pasta's had about three or four minutes, so it's well on the way to cooking. So we're going to get the garlic in there, and then we're going to add a teaspoon of fennel seeds, just to give that nice kind of aniseedy flavour that we know works so well with pork. In there. And then get your hands in and just work it and mix all those flavours together. So once they all come together, that's enough, that's it. Just gonna wash my hands. Right, these are ready just to go into the sauce now. So get yourself a decent dessert spoon and then just take the sausage meat, pop it into your hand and then just roll it. And then you've got a perfect little meatball and then just drop it gently into the sauce and that's it. And just turn that down so it's got a nice gentle simmer and then do the same again. 
You can do these as big or as small as you want. If you really push for time and you're using fresh pasta, do really tiny little ones with a teaspoon. If you've got dried pasta like I have, it's going to take nine, ten minutes. You can do these decent sized ones. Just pop the lid on the pan of the sauce there with the meatballs in. That's going to take about five or six minutes to cook. Then the pasta should be ready and then we'll be ready to eat. Just check the pasta, see if it's cooked. I think the only way is to taste it. Yeah, that's cooked. So, off with the gas and then pour it through a colander. And then sit it back on the pan there, let the rest of the water drain through and that should be ready to serve up. So, really quick, fresh and simple pasta dish in like 10, 12 minutes. So meatballs should be just perfectly poached. They won't have dried out or anything because we've not cooked them in a frying pan or anything like that. We've just poached them in the sauce. So they're really gently cooked. Make sure we get all of them. Smells absolutely fantastic. My mouth is watering. A little bit more sauce on there. And I'm just going to put a little bit of flat leaf parsley just on the top there just for a little bit of colour and just give it that little sort of flash of nice fresh green colour. There you have it, my Italian meatballs, a perfect quick midweek supper. There are full details of all the recipes featured in the series at channel4.com slash 4food. After the break I'm in the kitchen making a posh fish finger sandwich and my quick ice cream. Plus I'm paddling at Coniston Water Festival and fishing on the River Derwent. The Lake District. If you live here like me, you want to have the time to enjoy every square mile. I don't want to be working up a sweat in the kitchen all the time. I want to spend some time working one up fishing. After all, in these parts, this is shopping. It's the ultimate in self-service fishmongers. Fingers crossed, in a couple of minutes, I'll have a salmon for my posh fish finger sandwich, or it's a trip to the shops. Fish fingers to me mean quick and easy food, but I don't go to the freezer for mine because I reckon I can make fresh from salmon fillet just as quick as if you were making them from the freezer. So I've got a tail end fillet of salmon here. This is the cheapest cut because all the bit here beforehand is the expensive fillets that everyone buys and nobody buys this bit. So to me, this is perfect. Just take a nice flexible knife and just cut good sized portions like into fingers. When you get to about that stage, turn it round and then cut it long ways. Just put those to one side, they're ready. So the next thing we need to do is make the breadcrumbs. So I've got a big chopping board here, good loaf of bread, and then I'm just going to cut some slices just to give the food processor a head start really. About half this loaf will be more than enough. And any that you don't use, just pop them in the freezer when you're finished. So I'm going to cut these up into pieces again. And then again, once down the middle, and that's it. So we pop those into the food processor. And I'm just going to put a little bit of rosemary in there for some flavour. And I'll just turn that on and just blend that to a really fine crumb. Okay, we've got a nice fine breadcrumb there, so that should be just perfect. And I'm going to pop them into this tin here. So we just need some flour and we just need some eggs to help them bind. So three eggs should be enough for this one. And just use a whisk and just beat those up. Just want to break those yolks. And then just some flour into there. Doesn't matter which flour you use, whether it's self-raising or plain. And then a little bit of salt in there. And a pinch of black pepper, and that'll just help give it some flavour. Mix that in. 
Okay. Now the secret to breadcrumbing things is always keep one hand dry. With one hand, pop the salmon into the flour. Just roll them around, get them all evenly coated and then into the egg mixture. And the same again. And then the really easy way to breadcrumb these now is just lift them out of the egg mixture. Don't put your hands into the breadcrumbs, just shake the tin around. And eventually the fish finger will kind of roll around the breadcrumbs and it'll get, become out coated. Once you've done all three, as you can see, you just lift them out and they're all coated there ready. And then the other three. I did this recipe with my nieces once and they were more interested in me chopping a salmon up than they were in actually cooking the fish fingers. Pan's nice and hot, so just add some vegetable oil, probably about two tablespoons should be enough. And then we're going to carefully pop the fish fingers into the pan. Three should be enough for a sandwich. Just turn these over gently, you can see they're going really nice and golden brown. And once you've coloured them on all sides, we can pop those in the oven for about five minutes. Now I've got a pan here with a metal handle so it's perfect for that job. But you can either transfer them into another oven tray or just pop them straight in the oven. They'll be about five minutes, just time to clear down. Okay, fish fingers should be ready now. Just carefully move them out of the oven. Don't forget this pan handle is going to be red hot. So pop them down there. If you can see they're really nice and golden, really crispy. Best thing to do now with them is just whack them between two big thick slices of white bread. And then I've made some homemade tartar sauce, which is really, really simple to do. It's just mayonnaise, lemon juice, capers, gherkins and some flat leaf parsley. And then you just want to spoon that onto the bread. Really generous amount there. That's it. And then a few leaves of baby gem lettuce. Just take the outside ones off first so you get the nice sweet core. So just a few of those. Pop those on top. Should be enough lettuce on there. And then we just need to top this with our fish fingers. So pop those on. And then you want a little bit of salt along the top there. And then the key is just to get a really nice, good squeeze of lemon juice on the top of this. And that'll just cut it really, really nicely. And then on the top there. And then just cut it. And there you have it. My ultimate fish finger sandwich. I defy anyone to not enjoy that. Channel4.com slash 4food is the place to visit if you fancy trying your hand at this or any of the other recipes featured in the series. Coniston Water is the third largest of the lakes. It boasts Britain's oldest working steam yacht, the Gondola, the flagship and only vessel of the National Trust fleet. Gondola gave Arthur Ransom the idea for Captain Flint's houseboat in his children's book, Swallows and Amazons. Once upon a time, Coniston provided the fish for the monks of Furness Abbey. Today though, it's providing all manner of water-based family entertainment, which Peter and his family plan to take full advantage of. To find out more, Peter tracks down festival organiser David Coxon. So tell me David, how long has the Coniston Woods Festival been going on? It's been going actually since about the turn of the last century. Right. Um, when it was an old boat dressing and all that type of thing and it was a week long festival. It then stopped for a while and it's been restarted a few times by uh, different organisations. We've now shrunk it into a day and it's a day down by the lake where we have canoe race, duck races, um, have a go sessions for kids in sailing canoeing, right. 
all sorts of different things. And uh, I'm getting out on the water shortly for a canoe race. Have you got any tips for me? There's only one answer to winning a canoe race, and that's paddle hard. Paddle, paddle hard, hard and be light. That's why I'm so silk like because I'm <laughs> always the winner. Four minutes and 57 seconds. <laughs> Hello, Daddy did some rowing. There you go. Do want to go? When that lot eventually get to shore, they're going to be so hot and bothered, they're going to love my quick and easy ice cream. To make instant ice cream, first thing you need is some frozen strawberries. They just need to go straight in the food processor. Tub of Greek style yogurt, straight in with the strawberries. You want a tablespoon of honey. That should be enough. And that's it. And then pop the lid on. And then blend. Pop the lid on and pop it in the freezer until you need it. There we go. Now I might have come last in the boat race, but my quick ice cream is a definite winner. See you next time for another helping of the Lakes on a Plate.